Thank you, gentlemen. CLG there dismantling gravity back to form. You know, this I do want to recall to what we were talking about at the beginning of the day, whether or not CLG would be able to rebound from a TSM loss so quickly. Uh, appears as if they didn't have too much trouble doing that. One, one little hiccup in the mid mid game, just a little bit of a team fight struggle there for CLG. But what's a CLG game without a team fight struggle? Sure. <laughs> and in general, yeah, it looked like TSM played TSM. Sorry, uh, CLG played very standard CLG stuff. They emphasize Zion Spartan. They're one of the only teams I see routinely get Zion into that one-on-one -on -one or the one-on-two right away. Whether it's a freeze or not, he's going to be there in the lane soaking up golden experience. And the other three do enough cool stuff that he's safe to do that. He got one boon Alltech. He got like a two-and-a-half level lead over Hanser. He got like a 20 CS lead over Hanser. And Zion got to go be this badass top laner on Echo, and that worked really well. Um, on the flip side, though, we talk about pretenders and contenders and, you know, gravity being three and one leading into this as well. And I keep looking at move. And move keeps having these very polarizing games. He was their savior last week. It was wonderful. And in this game, I went and like just watched through the game again, and there's a large number of plays where he's doing his own thing, and it's not what the rest of the team is doing, and he's like taking a bunch of free damage for it, or he's like not part of the fights, and it's, it's hurting them right now. Yeah, I think that the level one throws you off really hard, too. I mean, CLG, it's not, it's not a CLG game without a good level one as well, because they, they just crushed that level one fight. Coming out with three kills immediately, is really hard to come back for from. They got that nice advantage there yeah. on the Echo. They were able to just transition that. And then as a jungler, at that point, it's really on you to make some aggressive moves, basically to almost go for a rush-like play and try to get your team back into the game or else you're just going to fall over. Well, so the, inter the interesting I thing is... I definitely think the move had options there. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be difficult. I think it was interesting, though, that even despite all the advantages that uh, the Echo had, like, Hanser was still holding up in the matchup. And to me, like, Hanser is probably the most improved player of the year. He came in as like a pretty good for a challenger top laner, and now he's like beating Zion Spartan 1v1 with a two-level disadvantage. And it's like, what What happened to Hanser, and where was your hyperbolic time chamber? Because this guy has been, <laughs> like, Summer Split especially, super impressive as a player. It, it, like, it, it's incredible. Just every, every game, something else happens that impresses me a lot. Um, but it, it still feels like there's a lot of inconsistent elements on gravity that keep them from being a top team. I do, I, I do want to talk about a consistent element, though, because we saw Aphromoo's Bard finally. Yep. And that was really good. I really liked his Bard play, setting up some level ones, setting up the magical journeys, and then just allowing CLG to have those scary rotations. I think it's going to be banned from now on. Well, but I, yeah, so continuing on, I guess, with the theme of champions, I do want to look at the Ash coming in because when she was reworked, we definitely thought about, you know, how is she going to fall into the mm -hmm. LCS in competitive play? She didn't really make it. You know, the few showings she had were not fantastic. Here, CLG has found a way to make her successful in putting Link onto that Lulu. So we, we're seeing a mid laner go back to a more supportive style mid laner, which most have trended away from in order to enable that Ash and the engage tool that is a barred Ash bot lane. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm not sure I'm in love with it. Uh, so the two parts being one, it's a pretty low damage team. They, they didn't even get Infinity Edge and Lulu mid and all that. Gragas adds some damage, but he's you know still mediocre. Um, and you know, just as a composition, like, it felt really low damage. It felt like this team wouldn't easily work without a gold lead. Because picking fights is great. And if you're able to play a really split-up game, then you can pick a lot of 3v2s, and that's fine. That's, it's like, you know, the TF comp they ran back in the playoffs. They can't team fight well. They just damn well better be ahead. And everyone gave CLG a bunch of flack for a team comp that team fought badly. Well, if you start the game with a three kill leading two levels in your top laner, your team fights are easy. But I'm still... It just, it's a difficult to run comp is all. And especially when you're losing out on the damage head, but by going Bloodthirst instead of Infinity Edge, uh, you, you really lose out on a lot of damage. Yeah, build path aside though, I think this composition is built to start the fight with an Ash Arrow, start it however you can with Gragas and stuff, then kite backwards. Lulu, if you do get somebody on your Ash, you pop them up, Ash kites for days. You cannot reach her. She's not mounted dependent anymore on her slow. She keeps people at an arm's distance. Like At that point, everybody, even Echo, the W, you don't always have to throw it where you think they're going to be. You can throw it where you know your team is kiting back to and set up that zone. So this team has some fallback strategies to it in its composition. It's just wonderful to watch teams continue to explore new possibilities, I new champions, them. which is great. So I do want to touch on the champion of the day, Echo. Echo. Just kind of recap, because we were wondering you know, how he would perform after having a very lackluster debut in the European LCS. We saw him four times today, twice in the mid lane, both losses, once in the top lane, once in the jungle. Both both wins. Thoughts? Sucks in mid. <laughs> it's been uh, concluded after one day. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to probably see jungle tank echo be the most consistent of the builds, just 
He uses Sitter Hulk pretty well and jumps into fights and can land crowd control. Uh, I think right now, mid lane Echo, I think he actually kind of, it seems like he needs to get his ult to deal damage from to be a really strong mid laner. And actually this was, as I kind of jump back at myself, the one comp where, that, where AP Echo would work because you talk about this comp is going to kite backwards. And a player that I saw actually do this was the Edward Gaming mid laner Pawn played AP Echo this week in LPL. It's a really good game. You should watch it. Um, and he would basically like make people follow him and then he'd ult to reach the back line. Yep. He like, he ults on top of the AD carrying support and goes like, surprise AP ratios with a death cap and like starts chunking people. And that was what this comp is sort of designed to do is, hey, let's go kite back on top of an echo clone. Goodbye AD yep. carry. That's really hard to do. <laughs> so like theoretically it's cool. I'm, I'm still more a fan of consistency, but hey, maybe we see it goes amazing. All right, team's definitely still trying to figure that champion out and plenty of room to grow. Well, CLG have managed to hold on to first place, but let's see how the rest of the teams look after another day on the Rift. Sharing the top spot with CLG are Team Dignitas and Liquid. Tied for fourth, it's Gravity, Impulse, and TSM. In seventh, it's Enemy Esports, followed by Cloud9 and Teammate in eighth. And TDK is in last. We will be back tomorrow with five more games to shake up the standings. The day kicks off with Cloud9 versus Teammate in a battle for eighth place. After that, Team Solo Mid will square off against TDK. Then stick around for our game of the week with Team Impulse versus Team Liquid. This is a replay of our third place match from the last two previous playoffs. That will all begin Sunday at noon Pacific, 9 p.m. Central European. Now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching and good night.